So today we're going to be talking about salary negotiation, and this is an exciting time because if you're negotiating salary, that means you have an offer on the table, and now you have to determine if that's something you're willing to accept or something that you would like to counter with. And there's a lot of information out there about whether or not you should negotiate, what you should negotiate for, and a lot of different tactics that go into that. And a lot of people feel that they almost have to negotiate. But today I wanna to talk to you about what our options are and how we can think through this process to make sure we're doing the right thing. There's a lot more than money to this. There is a career in front of us, a company that we might wanna work with. There is stress and anxiety that goes into negotiating. There are expectations that come if a company offers you more money or more flexibility or whatever the case may be. So we have to make sure we balance those and then also know our values. So let's go ahead and jump in. And we're gonna start with figuring out if you're in a position of strength. So let's hop into this one. So signs that you are in a position of strength. You are employed and you consider the job to be okay. So you've got your bills paid, you're all right where you are. Um, you do wanna get out of this job, you're ready to transition into a new career, but if you need to stay a little longer to find that perfect company or to get the pay that you're looking for, you're willing to do that. That's a strength position. Now, another strength position is being in second and third round interviews with other companies already. So let's say that you're getting plenty of interviews, you're getting moved on to the second round, sometimes the third round, and that's happening consistently, maybe once or twice a week. So you know if you uh, pass up on this offer or you counter and they take the offer off the table, you're okay with that because chances are you're gonna get another offer. And even if you don't get one this week or next week, uh, chances are you've got something in the pipeline, you're gonna be able to close that out. Now, sometimes we're not in a strength position and typically that's when we're unemployed. So we should really just about take any job we can get. And I wouldn't really recommend toying with the offers that you do get um, because when you're getting paid versus not getting paid, I personally would not recommend negotiating in that situation. Now, every situation is personal and you know your own situation better than I do. But my advice from my personal standing would be if I can get paid, I would prefer to get paid than be unemployed. Now, the other thing is I might already have a job, but I'm stressed out, work causes anxiety. Uh, I get home, I'm exhausted. My family's getting sort of the the worst version of me because I'm so uh, beat up after work. Um, that's not a life I want to live anymore. So I'm I'm still going to be more willing. That's a weak position. And I'm going to be more willing to accept an offer and not play around with it by uh, countering. Now, the other thing would be that interviews are uncommon. So this might be the only offer you're going to get. Uh, or it might be another two, three months before you get another offer because you're just not getting them that often. Now, I would, of course, seek professional guidance on how to get more interviews. But if I'm not willing to do that, I've already got an offer on the table, I'm probably going to accept what's right in front of me and then also seek guidance on how to get more interviews, improve my personal branding in the future. So the next topic we're gonna go into is a little more psychological and about being actualized and it's about understanding yourself. So I called this one, Be Real. Um, so. Let's get real for a second. Now, what I want you to do is just sort of take a deep breath and really let this be a reality for you, okay? So you've got an offer on the table. You're thinking about negotiating, but you're not sure you wanna go that direction yet. Now, this is what I wanna think through with you. So you're about to send them an email back or you might be getting ready to call them and let them know you have a counter offer. If you knew they were about to say no to that counter offer, would you still accept the original offer? So you've got to take a deep breath. You've got to figure this out. They tell you, no, this is the best we can do. This is all we have budgeted for this position. Uh, when we bring on entry level uh, professionals, this is what we have allocated for that. Are you still going to say yes to the position? That's one thing you need to consider. So if you're already going to say yes, you're already happy with what they're going to give you. Be thoughtful about whether or not you even want to negotiate and introduce that complexity into this process. Now think about how you would feel if they said that they had someone else who was willing to accept this offer. And 
that person has been extended the offer they accepted, they would have preferred to have gone with you, but this other person has accepted the offer on the table. And because you want more money, they basically don't respond to you or you don't hear back for a month and they let you know that they decided to go with another candidate. And this can happen. And you need to think about how that would make you feel. Are you going to say, you know, I missed that opportunity, but I think I have something better coming in the pipeline. You know, it's disappointing, but it's all right. If you're going to feel that way, okay, you should probably be negotiating. If you're going to feel like the world just fell out from under you and that Salesforce might not even be for you anymore because you just feel so disheartened from that failure, then I would recommend really being thoughtful about just accepting the offer that's on the table and not messing around with what you already have. So let's look at what the data says about these Salesforce entry-level roles. And again, you might be applying for something that's not a Salesforce role uh, if you're watching this and you're just sort of looking for negotiating tips. Um, for me, I work mainly with Salesforce professionals. So uh, this is how the data bears out for entry-level positions. About 10% of the time, not too bad, but it's really bad for those 10%, right? 10% of the time, you lose the offer. So they decide to go with another candidate. They are, they feel like they gave you an amazing offer and then you countered and they just feel really sort of betrayed. Uh, maybe if you established a personal relationship with them, you told them what you were looking to make, they landed it inside of what you ask for, and then you still counter that can get a little personal. And, uh, you can have people that, you know, if that, if that hits them a certain way, they might say, you know what, I'm just going to go with this other person because I did everything I could for them and they're still not happy with the offer, I'm gonna go somewhere else. Um, so 10% of the time that happens. Now, if you're looking at it in a silo, that's not that bad. You have a 90% chance of a better outcome, but are you willing to take the risk on being part of that 10%? All right, the other one is 40% countered, but they ended up with the same offer to start with. So just keep that in mind. So they countered, the company said, nope, that's the best we can do. And they said, okay, I'll take it. Uh, so that's going back to, would you accept the offer even if they said no? And 40% say, yeah, I would accept the offer. Um, and I negotiated and they still said no. 50% uh, the offer was improved. Now this doesn't mean that they got exactly what they asked for or that it was the perfect offer. Um, but it does mean they might've asked for 5,000 more and they got 1,000 more, or they asked for five more PTO days and they gave them two more PTO days. Uh, so think about that. Um, so you do stand a pretty good chance of having the offer improved, but just think about what your strength and weakness position is, uh, how willing you are to accept this offer. And then you can decide if there's a reasonable uh, likelihood that you should be negotiating for this position. All right, so let's hop over to do the math. So um, I'm very logical. I love doing the math behind some of this stuff. And I've got a very simple example that I wanna share and we can talk about how this bears out. And of course, this is all personal, different math for different situations, but I do urge you to do your own math. So let's make an assumption that you were offered $65,000 for an entry level role and you counter offer at $70,000 we can pretty simple math say you're negotiating for five thousand dollars right you're looking for five thousand more dollars so what does this mean why are we looking for five thousand dollars and even if they accept it is it still in our favor so let's take a look so things to consider on average it takes four to six weeks to go from an employer having interest in you, like maybe reaching out and inviting you to an interview or receiving your application and letting you know that they'd like to schedule an interview. It takes about four to six weeks from having that entry communication to actually getting an offer on the table. So that's a considerable amount of time. At $65,000, if it took six weeks, you could have made $7,500. So let, let me break this down. So if you had just accepted $65,000 and it took, let's say six weeks for them to counter your offer, uh, maybe come to agreements on something else. Um, and then they finally accepted your 70,000, you know, a few weeks later. Um, or if they said no thanks and you decided to wait on the next position because you're going to wait until you get the 70K you're asking for and you decide to wait on another role and interview with more companies and let's say that takes six weeks. So either one of those scenarios, if you had just accepted the 65K, 
six weeks later, you would have already made $1,250 a week. So that would have been $7,500. Even if it only took four weeks, that would still be $5,000 at $1,250 a week. So keep that in mind. So by waiting six weeks, instead of just saying, yes, I'll take it and trying to dig for that 70,000, you actually just sacrifice $7,500. That's more than you were negotiating for in the first place. So you actually lost money waiting for the right deal to come through. On top of that, you missed out on six weeks of real world hands-on experience with a company on your resume. That's huge. And you're gonna find that the most valuable part of your first job is the hands-on experience. That's what's going to allow you to get the second job. And in the Salesforce world, after you have a year of experience, you're going to jump from say $70,000 to probably eighty-five dollars to $95,000. So the faster you get that first year of experience, the faster you level up your income. Those first six weeks are a very big deal. So let's just keep that in mind that we sacrifice the time on the way to uh, that level up income after a year of experience. And we also sacrifice $7,500 negotiating for 5,000. So now the last thing, actually a couple more things I want to talk about, but common misconceptions. So misconception number one is this idea that the starting wage is the baseline for future negotiations and raises. So a lot of people say this, they say, well, I have to get a better starting salary or at least try because this is going to be the baseline for my raises in the future. So if they give me a 5% raise, they're starting at 70K instead of 65 with that 5%. Um, or if I'm negotiating in the future, I'm already making 70. So I know I'm going to make more than that instead of negotiating in the future for just 70. Now, this can be true, but in the tech space in general, and especially the Salesforce ecosystem, the likelihood that you stay with the same company for more than two years, especially early on, is very slim. In the first two to three years, you're likely going to work for two to three companies. That's just the nature of it. People are going to come after you. You have marketable skills. They're going to want you. They're going to poach you. They want you to come work for their companies, and they're going to pay you a lot more. So unless you just love your company and have tremendous company loyalty, chances Chances are you're going to be doing your negotiating when you're leaving your current employer going to the next one, not some three, five, seven percent annual raise, which means it doesn't matter about what you make now. What matters is you have a year of experience or two years experience, and you're going to get paid what you're worth at the market rate, which is going to be a huge increase. So I don't really care if you made $30,000 at your first year of experience, or you made $90,000 at your first year of experience. After that first year, you're still going to be worth that eighty-five dollars to $95,000. So just keep that in mind. So your income is based on your market value, not an increase year over year, typically. Entry-level salaries range from sixty dollars to 80000 And then after you have a year, you're going to go from, I think I mentioned eighty-five dollars to ninety-five, eighty dollars to one hundred, dollars right in there somewhere. Now, misconception number two is that you need to understand that if you made six figures at your old job, but you hate your job and it causes you stress and anxiety and you never want to go to work again, you can't just expect to make six figures at your first job transitioning careers. What you made in your past job has little impact on what you're going to make in this job starting careers over. But keep in mind how much you could be making another year from now, two years from now in a much less stressful environment. The other thing, very similar, your personal finances, your mortgage, your car insurance, your healthcare bills, those have nothing to do with your value. So you can't go in trying to negotiate for how much you need to pay your bills. That has nothing to do with your value. I see people do this all the time. They think, I want to negotiate for a little bit more money because that's not going to cover my expenses. Your expenses do not matter to an employer. It's your market value that matters to an employer. Now, other ideas, uh, just keep in mind uh, as we wrap this up, this is the last thing. You can negotiate for more than money. You can negotiate for PTO days, more remote flexibility. Uh, you can even talk about working something in where if you get additional certifications or meet certain performance metrics, that you get immediate raises and you don't have to wait on that one year review or something like that. And just keep in the back of your mind, experience is far more valuable than the money you make early in your career. You will make plenty of money throughout your career get the job, get the experience. That's where the value is. Let me know in the comments what tips you have. I would love to hear from you guys. Thanks for watching.